Good afternoon, I am just on my way out to a local agricultural co-op. Just gonna grab some water on my way, so on my way back. So I'm just loading up the car with the bottles. And this is a very exciting trip because I am gonna pick up some trees. Quite a few trees that I ordered back before Christmas, probably back in the autumn. It's now the end of January. They took a while to arrive, but they have now arrived, so I'm really excited. And look at what we've got. We're borrowing this wood chipper from a friend um, in exchange for some help cutting some canes that he's gonna use in a project. If you don't know what this is, this is a wood chipper and it's gonna help us deal with some of the many piles of branches that we've been accumulating over the last year, year and a half, like this one. But um, yeah, first let's go and get those trees. irrigation field and we're going to have a line of trees going along the back edge of it so I think this is going to be like the limit of the rows of flood irrigated veggies that we're going to have eventually when it's all done so I'm just digging a channel along around here it's going in a slight curve because I'm leaving an area for um, yeah like a walkway to get to the chickens and get down there and yeah along here we've got four pistachios one male and three females one male is apparently enough to pollinate up to 10 females, but we're going to start with three and see how they do. And the first tree is a nashi, which is a kind of Japanese pear type fruit, which I've never tried, but I'm excited to grow. Alongside planting the trees, we also started working with the chipper to get through some of the many piles of branches which we'd accumulated over the last two years. Some of the branches piles were already here from before when we even bought the land. We knew this would be an easier job with two people, so we waited for the weekends when we could tackle it together. As you can see, we started off without really a clear method. We just parked the machine next to a pile of branches, grabbed stuff from the pile and shoved it into one of the machine's two holes, depending on the size of the branch. we've used a wood chipper at our place and uh, yeah it's pretty cool we've got a lot of piles of branches that we needed to deal with we've barely scraped the surface of this first pile and we've already got a wheelbarrow full of wood chippings I'm gonna take them to compost down somewhere I'll probably mix them in with a pile of manure to try and balance the um, like the brown stuff with the green stuff because this is all pretty much brown carbon stuff <laughs> What's going on here? We jammed it, of course. <laughs> you you jammed it. How did you jam it? Yeah, I just put too much stuff at once. <laughs> <laughs> Got excited. Yeah, he put about 12 canyas in at the same time. No, that wasn't going to work. Is, 12 is an exaggeration. Seven. Maybe two or three. Seth, I saw that huge you know, handful. But they weren't all going at the same time. <laughs> Okay, 
we're halfway through the first pile. It's taken a little while. It's quite a lot of preparation of the branches that you have to do to get them in. And uh, but yeah, with two of us, it is going fairly quickly. We've done like three, four wheelbarrows so far, and uh, it's quite fun. Some uh, local honey from some friends. Having a little tea break because it's a bit chilly. <laughs> And also, despite it being a lot of work, it's not that heavy work. Yeah, you don't get warm. Chipping, so you don't really get that warm. My nose is freezing. You could do it forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first branch pile that we tackled was one that had been there since before us, and which we'd also added to on top of. As we got towards the bottom of the pile, we discovered that underneath was a pile of building rubble mixed in with all sorts of other rubbish. Just come back to this pile today because we weren't quite finished getting through it yesterday and I realised that underneath all the branches and twigs there's actually a lot more rubbish, human rubbish, than I realised. So I'm just picking out all of that. I think it was all in plastic bags originally but I think they've just completely disintegrated and there's tiny little bits of plastic particles everywhere. Just a reminder really what happens to your rubbish if you just leave it. What's happening here would be happening in a landfill or somewhere else. It's just that we get to see what happens to it. You think it's really gross, but it's just a reminder of what's happening to your rubbish wherever it is, whether it's here or in a landfill somewhere else outside. It was probably only a couple of bags of rubbish, which I'm sure the owner was probably planning to take down to the bins at some point. It's not like we find loads of rubbish everywhere. This place, although I say it was abandoned, was actually well cared for when the owner was was alive and was healthy and was was looking after this place but it's just a reminder that when you leave something what happens to it and we're no better we've left piles of rubbish and all sorts everywhere and we should probably be better as well at making sure that if we weren't here tomorrow what we leave doesn't do any damage without us the next day we moved the chipper to the next pile of branches we're on to our second pile, which I'm really excited about. These are tops of canyas, tops of canes that we harvested the other day. And I think they're going to go through really well. And it's also cool that they've got a bit of green still in them. They're not completely dried out. So, so I think this is going to make a nice mulch. And then we've got another branch pile over there. Smells like grass, grass cuttings. Yeah, it's so fine. It's really, it's a lot finer chopped. It's almost like it's almost like sawdust, even in places. Yeah. We can put this on top of the trees potentially that we plant. Yeah. Because it's uh, it's fine enough. I hope that it'll just break down. It'll break down quickly. Thank you. 
Meanwhile, I was still working on planting my trees. So I knew I wasn't going to get onto all the bare root trees this weekend, so last night I just buried them in this pile of compost and gave them a good water, so hopefully they'll be alright in there for a little while. I'm actually doing quite well for compost at the moment. I've got this pile here, which isn't quite done, but it will be soon. I've got a pile over there, which is mostly horse manure. Got a pile here, this is well rotted mix of animal manure. And I've got about three or four other piles. I've got some around the other side of the chicken coop, which is where I was tipping the uh, wood chippings yesterday. I've got the ones near the house for the human manure. It's just kind of handy to have little piles everywhere, and then whenever you need some, you can go and grab some. So we've got some manure for the bottom. We've got the tree. We've got some of those nice green really fine uh, chippings from the canes yesterday, which I'll put on top. It probably would have been more efficient to dig all the holes first and then bring all the materials and do it step by step like that but I didn't want to dig 20 holes at once so I'm doing it this way. What have you got there? You got your little pile of stuff? What's this? What's this? I'm gonna be honest, I maybe got a bit overexcited with this tree purchase. It was kind of a Christmas present to myself, which I ordered well before Christmas and arrived a month after Christmas, so it wasn't really very Christmassy. But yeah, I guess I just got a bit carried away by the fact that we now have irrigation in this field and that I could plant a bunch of trees which I wouldn't have to water with a watering can. So I had a really big job trying to plant all of these trees and I was slightly regretting having got so many. But they say the best time to plant a tree is 15 years ago and the second best time is now, so it's probably not too bad of a decision. So as well as planting the trees, I'm also digging the channel at this point which will bring water up past the trees. And I'm also branching the channel off around the base of each tree a little bit just to improve the water infiltration where it's needed. Let's leave the past behind Walk with me There's something else we need to find Say you'll go, don't make me wait There's no need to Meanwhile, back at the chipping job, our first weekend of chipping had taught us that preparation is everything. It was really annoying to pick up a branch and then have to pull or snip bits off it so that it would fit through either of the two holes in the machine, and it really slows down your rhythm. So ahead of the next weekend, I decided to spend a bit more time preparing all the branches up front so that we could run the chipper for as little time as possible and just enjoy the process a lot more and for it to just go a lot smoother. Preparing all the branches literally took me the entire week. It looks pretty fast sped up, but I can assure you it was a lot slower in real life. I worked at it for most mornings of the week, alternating with tree planting whilst I was charging the chainsaw battery. In general, this whole week of digging holes and chopping up branches took way longer than I thought it would, and came at a time when I would much rather have just been working on the kitchen, 
but these things really did need doing and the great bonus is that we got lots of firewood out of some of the thicker branches which we'll be able to burn next year. What I'm basically doing here is separating out all the bigger bits of wood which we can burn only if it's quite chunky and it's actually worth it and then I'm just preparing all the branches so that they can just be grabbed from the pile and go straight through the chipper just makes it so much faster when we're actually chipping we don't have to have the machine on for so long so although it's quite a lot of work to prepare everything it's definitely worth it I mean you've got to do it at some point you're either doing it while you're chipping or you're doing it before doesn't help that I have to make every pile of sticks twice because Una takes pretty much every stick and puts it in her own little pile or somewhere else in the garden. I think she's starting a new pile over there. What you got there? What you got there? One of my sticks. Yeah, I think I'll have that. I've said it before, I know, and I'll say it again. I love the mini chainsaw. Not specifically this one, but just the concept of a mini chainsaw, although this one's absolutely fine. They're so good, they're relatively cheap, and I literally use it all the time. It's so handy to just be able to hold it in one hand because it's battery powered, so it's really light. Uh, it's just really easy to use and super useful. I do need to get a second battery for it though, because this lasts about 20, 30 minutes now. Well, less if you were using it constantly, but I've been like stopping and starting. But other than that, and that's not a fault of the chainsaw, that's just the battery, it's just how it is. Um, it's great. I need to tighten up the chain a bit on it, but you can tighten the chain just with a little screwdriver in here. Super easy. Which way am I going? That's better. You can sharpen the blade with a normal blade sharpening tool like you would for any other chainsaw. And this one came with this little pot of oil, which is just uh, chain oil, which you just put directly on the chain. So it's super easy to maintain and use. And I really like it. cleared. Just a couple more piles to go. Thoughts on the wood chipper so far? It's really good. Like I'm surprised. Uh, it consumes a lot less fuel than I thought. Like we've been all morning and it, sh it keeps going. I just <laughs> <laughs> don't know when it's gonna run out. Um, it's quite noisy. That's annoying but that's to be expected. Would you, would you do you think it's worth owning one or is it the kind of thing that's better just to borrow? No, it's it's not worth, like for us it's not worth owning it. It's it's mo so much better to just share it between people because we're going to use it, what, like four weekends a year? It's not for four it. days. We could do it in four days probably. Yeah, if we, we, had if four we did it all in a row, we could do it in, in four days, but yeah. And that's two years worth of branches, so. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to have some lunch and then get back to it. Yep. Have like maybe one more mountain to make. Yeah. And we've got some other areas as well. We are almost done with this area. I can't believe that that enormous pile of branches that the goats had been eating has ended up in these little piles of chippings. It's barely anything. Well, it's a lot of it's a lot of chippings, but it's, it's uh, wood, right? 
<laughs> yeah, it's uh, the, vo the volume is just like so much less. So yeah, that's really cool. We're about to start on the final little pile over here, which we need to do in this area, which is Mauro's favorite material, canes. They go in so nicely. What? Canes, they go in yeah. so nicely. Sorry. And um, do, you wanna, do you wanna tell everyone about <laughs> about this hole. I don't think there's anything to tell. <laughs> this is like where you put the... Like I think it took us a while to figure it out that the top bit is for like very 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 small stuff because also the, the, the blades run like this. So if you put something like long it just goes straight through and comes out. Well if you go here like the blades go like that and... So we're basically really putting everything in that hole. Yeah, so we're putting everything here just because we see the results. If you only put things here, you get like really good chips. And if you do like Harriet, see like <laughs> an entire stick comes out and nothing happens to it. You could put your hand and nothing would happen. Yeah, so we've got a favorite hole. We're back again near the car. I've accumulated another pile here to chip, so we're back where we were when we started. Ooh. Let's do this. to have both totally ruined our gloves doing this yeah. on the thumbs. <laughs> Good yep. pair of gloves. I we don't know what it uh, is stronger. about it. No, we need stronger gloves. Yeah. Melrose ruined his hands as well. <laughs> yeah, they look awful right now. <laughs> but we've done another pile. Yay! One more to go? One more to go. It's another lovely cold morning, which means it's a good time to dig some holes and warm up. This area that I'm digging in now is what I hope will become the bigger chicken and duck enclosure at some point. Roughly from around the back of that olive tree there, following the line of the fence, more or less to where I'm digging now, and then it'll come in here. I'll probably move that compost pile to within the enclosure area, and then we'll have a back wall coming along here and we'll move the coop into the inside of the enclosure probably rebuild it and have something bigger for the chickens and the ducks at some point. So I'm planting a few trees inside this area because I want to have some trees and some shade and trees that drop their fruits and stuff like that for the chickens. It's a really long term plan but there's no harm in getting started. Not sure what I'm going to plant in this hole but I've got about nine more trees left so I'm going to try and do three holes today. Three holes the next couple of days and then plant them all together because I've currently got the trees all nicely kind of temporarily planted in soil so that they're all right overnight with these freezing temperatures and the roots aren't left out exposed so I don't want to dig them all up until I've got all my holes ready. Okay, so that is all the trees planted. There's six in this field where the chickens are eventually going to be. There's another six or seven, I think, along the edge of the the edge of the flood irrigation field. And then the rest are dotted around. I'll put a list of all the trees in the description in case you're curious. And I'll put a map of our land here on the screen so you can see where our new trees are. One of my goals for this year was to make a map of all the trees and all the things, the features of our land. Um, so this is just a very rough diagram for me to see where the trees are that I've planted just now. 
I'd like to print out for myself a much bigger version of this and go around and mark everything else on it. So if I do that, I'll upload it somewhere or I'll show you because I think it's quite cool. And lots of people have asked to see a sort of um, map, I guess, of our land and what it looks like, what shape it is and stuff like that. So that is our trees for 2023, at least for the autumn winter period. I'm planning to plant some fruit bushes in the spring. I think that's a better time for them. But for now, that is more than enough. That was a lot of work next year. I think maybe I won't buy so many trees, but it's really good to get them in the ground. The earlier, the better, I guess. So I'm happy about that. It's also been really nice to combine these two activities of the chipping and the trees because we've used all the wood chip that we produced in the planting of these trees, which is really nice. All of these trees have got a big wheelbarrow load of manure at the bottom mixed in with the soil that they're planted in. Then there's a really thick layer of chippings all around the base. And then on top of that, I put like a semi-composted, very strawy, um, like dry mulch around because the wood chippings in dry weather, they're just going to get so dry and they're really not going to break down at all. Um, so I'm hoping that with this kind of straw mulch on top, they'll retain some of the moisture that they'll be like absorbing as I water them. That's my plan. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to take these dogs away from the pile of tasty, smelly manure. And I'll see you in the next video. Come on, come on. Come on, let's play.